So instead of coming up with an idea, prototyping it, spending our, our time, money, passion, and, and then pushing it out, instead of just pushing it out and finding that nobody wants it, I'm going to give you the Red Blue Collective formula. This is our enduring formula for developing and launching successful products. All right, so step one, we're gonna select a customer segment. So you hear about niches and tribes and all this terminology, but for our formula, we wanna select a group of people this is kind of like cheating, right? We want to select a group of people that we know a lot about. We, we know this group of people because we are a member of this group. We understand their vocabulary. We understand where they hang out, who they listen to, you know, their influencers, their magazines, their uh, shows. So the real secret to selecting this customer segment is that you want to actually care about these people. Not fake care or care about selling to them, but actually care about them. Step two in the enduring formula, we're going to go out and we're actually going to go talk to these people, right? We're going to go talk to them about their problems. We're not going to talk to them about our crazy idea, right? We're not going to try to sell them anything. We're not going to reveal our intellectual property or when our Kickstarter is going to launch. We're just going to go talk to these people. Now, the number that you talk to it kind of depends on what you're doing. And, uh, how you talk to them, it depends on what that customer segment looks like. But what we're testing is that you actually have the ability to reach these people, even a small group of them. Step three, we're going to take those conversations and we're going to analyze them for patterns, the language, the stories that they use. That's going to help us build messaging down the road and refine the requirements and what are actually our product does, right? So we want to understand our customers better than anyone else on earth. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, this sounds a lot like Lean Startup. Yeah, it does, because it is. I try to deviate from the dogma of the most popular books and strategies, take away the fiddly vocabulary and you know, special words that people use and just get right to the tactics and the strategy. Step four of the enduring formula, we're going to create a traction product. And traction products are the smallest increment of what will actually solve the problem that our customer has. Now, NVPs are the smallest version of your product idea that you can build and sell to a customer. A traction product doesn't have to be your product. It could be an information product. It could be a consulting service. It's something that you could do next week to build that relationship with the customer. We want, we want to make sure that their problem is actually worth solving and that we understand it enough to solve it in any way. Step five is capture feedback. This is absolutely critical. We want to capture those testimonials. We want to capture that criticism and praises to know what's working, what's not working, how to improve and really understand on a detailed level how we can build an amazing product. Step six is release. Now those people that we just, we just sold to, that we've been speaking to, those are our early adopters. That's our core audience, right? We can leverage that audience because they're in our tribe. They like us. We've helped them. They will help you distribute your product, right? So as we release whatever that methodology is, we can use those early adopters as part of our distribution strategy. Learning to release a small product is critical because really running a product business, a lot of the difficulty is in the business part, not the product. Right, so learning the marketing, learning the office part, the back end, you know, how to do taxes, do all of the little business components, right? Building a team, shipping, all of those elements 
when the stakes aren't so high. We haven't invested a million dollars in product development and inventory, right? We've invested our knowledge, our experience, uh, and a week or two's worth of time to build a traction product, right? After we've released our product using those early adopters and we've seen some traction, we've gotten market acceptance. Now it's time to scale those sales. So whether we're using Facebook ads, uh, retail partners, we're using Kickstarter, distributors, whatever the strategy is, we don't want to employ scale until we've figured out our messaging and figured out all those business tactics, strategies, skills, all of those. So again, we're scaling a traction product, a very small product that's enabling us to satisfy customers, to turn potential leads into customers, into fans. Step eight is iterate. So now that we've had success, we've learned a lot. Now we're ready to take that revenue, take that profit, hopefully, that we've built from our traction product release, put it back into the system, into the business system that we've created, and we can satisfy those same customers to sell them something new. We can use our experience of already satisfying them as the testimonials, the distribution, to support to support our next product. And we can do that and we can go bigger and bigger and bigger. So product is a strategy for a moment in time. As your business scales, the products can scale. Don't let a giant idea sink your business on day one, right? There's always a smaller increment of that idea that will make somebody absolutely, absolutely satisfied. They will fall in love with your company and it doesn't need to be a million dollar development deal.